A quick disclaimer, opinions of host and guest do not represent the views or opinions of functional movement systems. Always consult your physician before beginning any exercise program. This general information is not intended to replace your healthcare professional. Welcome to the Movement Podcast. This show is all about movement. We tackle it from different angles, bring on guests, answer questions, go on a few tangents, and give practical advice, giving you guys a better idea of how you can optimize the human body to be the best it can be. Let's preview what's coming up in this episode. George Burns once said, you can't help getting older, but you don't have to get old. Today, we discuss working out after 40. The guys give advice on aging gracefully, setting ourselves up for better movement now, no matter your age, and how our approach can vary based on gender. In the second half, friend of the show, Brian Nguyen returns to weigh in. They tackle motivation, goals, prioritizing yourself, and how alcoholic kombucha just may be the ultimate answer. So get a stretch and let's get moving with this episode of The Movement Podcast, powered by FMS. Great. Both of us are uh, on the backside of 40. Uh, you're a little bit older, so you're on the backside of 50. And, you know, as we keep trying to keep ourselves in shape and active, everything takes a little bit more time to get right during these uh, during these days. And it's easy to say your strength's slowing down or getting worse, your mobility is getting worse. It takes a little bit more time to kind of get that engine and rev back up. So kind of almost everything is being impacted negatively the older we get. And that's not really anything, there's no secret there, but it's certainly some things we need to be considering as we start to train and push ourselves more. No, you're absolutely right. And and there's two things you can do, lower your expectations or do something about it. And, and I think a lot of people just because of frustration with misinformation or the minute you put a topic on the internet, you're going to get both sides of the argument. And, and so what it becomes easier for people to do is like, yeah, I just don't do that anymore. Um, and you know, I, I watched it in my parents, my dad, you know, he would get after it on the tennis court. He would slalom water ski. And then one day he just quit, but it wasn't an injury or anything. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't do that anymore. But it's like, we get these little pings in our life. We get these little tweaks. We don't talk to anybody about them and we just get a smaller life. And then one day we wish we could do something and then we're, we're five years removed from a, a 10 mile day hike or maybe skiing a little bit or something. And, it, and it's way harder than it's ever been. And we get discouraged and then our life actually gets even smaller. So, so don't give yourself too much permission. But the one thing that I think we could all, everybody listen and be sensitive to is one of the number one risk factors for both your overall health and your movement risk in your movement problems is your body comp. So if, if you look in the mirror and know that, that things could be leaner, um, start there and don't think about exercise. What are the other things you can do to become a little bit leaner version of yourself? Sleep better, clean up your diet and stuff like that, and then bring movement in. But there is a detoxification that, that goes through you when you start drinking a lot more water and a lot less other stuff and you start eating a lot better food and then you really start monitoring your sleep and all you're trying to do is follow good general advice on all those things and about a month later you will have detoxed your body and now you can run your body across not a lifestyle screen, but a movement screen. And believe it or not, if you'll take four weeks and clean up your lifestyle before you start exercise, you'll never start up, stop exercising the rest of your life. But if you clean up your lifestyle and start exercising the same week, and I've heard you say this to a thousand people, you're not going to stick with either one. Yeah. Well, the, the one thing you also, you, you say don't give yourself permission, but there are certain things that, that you do have to realize as you get older, as we get older, that you're not going to be able to do as well. It's just, it's just nature. It's natural. But 
you can't just realize, okay, I used to love doing this, so I'm going to stop doing this. You have to substitute. You have to put something else in its place. If you used to, like you said, hike 10 miles, well, okay, the expectation may not be 10 miles now. The expectation may be five. Mm -hmm. Or the expectation is, hey, maybe I should start cycling more. So what we have to do is substitute those things as we get older and realize that, hey, we're getting older. We may not be able to play basketball like I used to when I was 30, but I'm going to be doing something else now. Or go on the 10 mile hike, put the backpack on your son. <laughs> it's like same 10 miles. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but it's, any, it's any so- modification is good. And I'll tell you one that I've often thought would be an amazing onboarding routine. I've, I've worked with some guys, uh, military, PTSD and stuff, and not all the scars you get from battle are on your skin, right? And, and it physically demoralizes you when, when you have pain and can't do things. And when we started playing around with those electric bikes, those fat tire electric bikes, Nobody knows if I'm taking 50% assist or 10% assist with the electric motor and battery on the bike. Wouldn't it be invigorating for five different people of different fitness levels to go on a 20-mile bike ride? The electric bike did two-thirds of my ride because I'm recovering from a you know, back surgery or something like that. You hardly, you didn't use any you know, of the battery power and Ashley used half of it, but we all saw the same 20 miles. We all had the same conversation. And my only goal is to use less battery power next time. Yeah. That's so it's it. basically the small little modifications yeah. that you need to do. But I think the key takeaway is you've got to maintain your activity level. You've got to main, you've got to continue to be active. You can't just say, well, I'm older now. And like you, like, and you said it um, just a couple minutes ago is before you know it, it's you're five years in and now you're not working out and you look in the mirror and like, holy shit, I'm fat. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, you know, you ever said that? Uh, no, um, <laughs> I have <laughs> three or four times and I've said it to you about you too. So. Yeah, you told me I'm fat, we but I never said I'm fat. to share a room on the road when we lectured. Uh, hey Lee. That's why I buy bigger shirts. <laughs> we're both uh, lecturing about fitness and rehab and we're both fat. What should we do about that? <laughs> I don't know. We'll go to the bar and talk about it. <laughs> let's, go, let's go to the bar where everybody else is fatter. <laughs> That's right. We go to Walmart and feel great about ourselves. But. So when it, when it comes to, you know, working out over 40, is there anything maybe you'd suggest to the younger audience, 35, 30, in diversifying maybe what their athletic endeavors are currently? So then it's not such a quit something, start something at 40 or over. I think at 30, you do still have some of that physical of your 20s left over. This is when you do it right and get everything right and and just work out all the bugs. Don't bring functional problems into 40. Get rid of them before you get to 40, and then 40 is easier. Well, but what, one thing I think we're, we're kind of keep talking about the age. Chronological age doesn't mean that much. You could be 30 and be you know, have the body and the mind of a 70 year old. You could be 70 and have the body and the mind of a 40 year old. So we don't, and and anyone should not get caught up in the chronological age. It's really, as long as you're staying active and you're doing the basics, you'll be okay. But we can't keep getting caught up into saying, you know, 30 and 40 and 50. It's really dependent upon how you feel and yeah, really how you feel. And, and, and I think spe- specifically to males out there, I think your testosterone levels probably have a lot more to do with how the age you feel than the age you are. And when I was getting ready to go through some bunch of medical procedures, one of the first things forward thinking and functional medicine doctors think about is, well, I want to look at your hormone spectrum. And I was getting ready to get a, a procedure a few months back. And he said, I want to look at your testosterone levels. And they were, he was actually going to su- suggest supplementing testosterone. And just I've been help- suggesting that for years, Greg, for you. For me, you think? Yeah. I'm not confident enough or something. <laughs> but, but no, he said, he goes, what are you doing? Uh, your testosterone levels are as high as people after I've supplemented them. And I'm like, it's really weird. You know, and I started telling about what you and I've talked about, intermittent fasting. I cleaned up my diet and cleaned up my sleep. And I had actually had my testosterone levels checked three years prior to that when I was heavier, working out less, and still sort of operating on the mantra that I'll sleep when I get old. And all I did was uh, manage a little bit cleaner food, a little bit less food, a little bit better sleep, and uh, quit pushing against pain. I think, I think I was one of those guys that, that what, what I would call discomfort and, and easily compartmentalize. No, that was pain. And I was just trying to out-tough it. But I was working against pain, not sleeping good, and eating not like I should. 
And I basically fixed those three things. And you, my, mean you feel better now than you felt felt probably ten years ago. Oh my gosh! And 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 I'm probably within uh, ten or fifteen pounds of what I graduated high school in. And 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 so, but yet my testosterone levels aren't what's holding that. That lifestyle is what's holding my testosterone levels. And so if you got to supplement, you got to supplement. But I've always thought supplement is supposed to let you get a glimpse of what you should feel like if everything else were right. But most of the time, it ends up being a crutch that you never get rid of. And so there's no, there's no dishonor in supplementation. But are we trying to work back off of that and use it to modify lifestyle? Because there's so many ways. There's knee braces, there are back braces, there are tempur mattresses. But, you know, for the most part, our life is really comfortable. And if we can just get a little uncomfortable, a lot of good things start happening again. But it doesn't mean eat pain, <laughs> you know, it's just knock yourself out of your comfort zone for a good reason and then watch the benefits four months later. Do you think there's a population of people who've made, you know, HGH is really popular. And so do you think they're just putting that on as a Band-Aid to their toxic lifestyle, thinking that it's going to make everything better? Yeah, it's taking a multivitamin and then eating at McDonald's. You know, it's like pissing in the ocean. It ain't going to make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> So we've talked about, you know, getting a little bit older, continuing to work out. We talked a lot about the men who might be listening. What about for the women? Well, I don't have any personal experience, um, <laughs> but I think overall at a high level, it's, it shouldn't be much different. I mean, it's, again, it's don't get so much caught up in the age, but how you feel it's, again, I think we can go back to, as Greg talked about the toxic lifestyle, kind of making, getting your body clean, eating right. But then- continuing to be active. So I think that the generally speaking, it's very, very similar. I don't think you need to separate. I think you can get in the weeds. I th again, people overcomplicate it. I think the professionals overcomplicate it. And I'm, you know, I think the, the big difference in the males and females is when you have pregnancy and what occurs after that. But for the most part, there, there shouldn't, you know, we don't need to overcomplicate things. The, the advice, and, and this is generally speaking, obviously, if I were talking to you personally, we'd be doing some tests and screens. But for the most part, I think guys, when they get into their 40s, they would really like to reclaim some muscle. And so they get into strength training before they get mobility. And I have had so many guys come back to me and I'm like, before you go strength training, I want you to do a bunch of yoga and body weight stuff. And what I'm really saying is work out your mobility problems first, but, I'm, but at least it sounds like a workout. For the females, they will usually migrate more to the yoga. And at about 40 with females, that's when strength training makes a huge difference in their hormone profile and bone density. So I think guys can unburden their testosterone by just living better and eating better. I think females can actually balance their hormone spectrum by getting a little bit of work capacity in there because they naturally have more mobility so they can actually benefit from strength training much quicker than men can who are using poor movement patterns. But what you're really getting back to, Gray, is the fundamental philosophy. Work on your weakness, not on your strengths. The males tend to have a tendency to want to do what they're good at, which is more strength training. Females have a tendency to want to do more flexibility, which is what they're naturally good at too. So it's a matter of just flipping those around. Yeah. So if you're a 40 year old married to a 40 year old and she's going to yoga class and you're going to basically do kettlebells, you also just switch <laughs> for a while. Yeah. I'll take your, I'll take your slot. Yeah. You take switch mine. Switch gym but memberships. It is. It is. And, and, and one of our partners, Kyle Kiesel came back to me and after doing a little bit of corrective on some of the problems he was having, he actually started going with his wife to yoga class and he goes, this is locking in everything I corrected. And I'm like, that's so cool. I love when people drop a corrective. We are the ramp that gets you to your right corrective, but I want you to get off that on-ramp and get right back on your life as quick as possible. For over 30 years, Functional Movement Systems has been the leader in movement health. We've developed a system that bridges the gap between fitness, performance, and healthcare professionals. Our screen and assessment tools help pros set the course for their clients and patients and gets them moving well so they can continue to move often. The functional movement screen is the foundation of our system and checks vital signs in movement competency through patterns. From youth or professional athletics to the elderly population and everyone in between, the screen is your starting point. The presence of pain is a vital sign we consider in our system. 
The Selective Functional Movement Assessment, geared toward healthcare professionals, is the diagnostic assessment for individuals experiencing pain during movement or with the screen. Once proper treatment is administered by clinicians, the patients are cleared to resume regular activity. The screen is once again at play to set the movement baseline. But what's next? When an individual displays competency in the screen, it's time to advance to another level. The Fundamental Capacity Screen, which tests for fitness, performance, and capacity. The system identifies whether individuals warrant additional rehabilitation or corrective exercise, or if they're ready for performance-based activity. Decide what course is right for you and get started on your professional journey today. So Brian, uh, I don't know, something happened to me when I turned 40 and I just don't work out the same. I don't know if I, that's something that you've had to deal with personally, professionally, but man, oh man, back in, when I was late 20s, early 30s, seems like I could do a little bit more. I would agree. I'm pretty, I'm right there with you, buddy. It's not quality. It's quantity. You were using the billboard for different Wrong. purposes in those it's days, It's quality. Too. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, every, all my clients now are over 40. All my male clients are over 40. There is this sudden, oh, I'm 40, everything's downhill, and the, uh, it's, it's going to go to crap. But that's not the truth. We all know that it's just about how you practice your lifestyle, and when you dissect the lifestyle of what you're doing, you're just, it's just the effects of what's going on. We all, gravity's on all of us. And uh, thank God I'm only 140 pounds, 5'4". And uh, all you tall people that are above six feet tall, hey, sorry. No, I'm just kidding. Well, well you know. <laughs> gravity treats us worse. <laughs> well, one thing for me uh, personally is my goals changed. Yeah. My goals changed quite a bit from the time I was 30 to the time I was 40. And uh, one thing that happened was I started having kids. Mm. Um, so that certainly changes my outlook. Mm. I mean, before I was just looking to maybe play some basketball, play a little golf, work out. So, you know, I could actually take my shirt off, you know, outside the house. Uh, that changes once you have a couple of kids. Mm -hmm. they, they do have that hashtag, dad bod, right? The, um, the, that book, um, un, un, F you, you know, whatever, unscrew yourself. Unblank yourself. Unblank yeah. yourself. You know, the, the author talks about, um, even at age 40, you're willing to do a lot of things that, you know, kept you healthy at age 20. It's just that you now have kids. And so what you're willing to do suddenly gets pushed aside with responsibilities, et cetera. And it really is about finding things that you're unwilling to deal with later on, right? And so, you know, for me, I have a 13-year-old daughter and a three-year-old son. When he is, uh, I would love for him to play sports and I want to be able to play sports at a high level with him. I want to be able to still throw him the football if he wants to run a route or run away from him if he wants to play defensive end or if he wants to play basketball. I want to be able to cover him. And, you know, so if that's the case, I'm unwilling to let that experience go. That's why I work out every morning. I find that thread. Everybody, no matter what age you are, you, if you can't find that thread, then you, you, you have to expect you go down the slope because that's what gravity and that's what life does to you if you're unwilling to fight. But Rocky said it best. The fight of life, you just keep getting up. Yep. It's about getting knocked down and getting back up. Life as you age is adversity. But how you approach that adversity day in and day out dictates what you do. Bo, Bo Kaplan, he's my, um, he's my, I love this guy. He, he's, I see him every day almost, except for the weekends when he's golfing and doing pickleball. But he's been my client now for close to seven years and we are as best of friends as could be. I, you know, I would, boys, I heard, I heard boy. you coaching him the other day. It hey, was, it was he, good. I, it was good stuff. I will not, you know, he's, he's two years older. Yep. He's got five kids, right? And he has an entire company, Lakeshore Learning. That he's a CEO, you know, $500 million company. He's taking, he's got workers. He's got distribution. He's, there's so many things on top of five teenagers in the house. Oh, I'm sorry, one adult's already there. You know, the wife who's, you know, survived cancer. I mean, this guy has been through the ringer and, you know, he's beat down, broken. But every day this guy goes, I work out so that I can continue to be there for my family. I want to be, I don't want to be a scrawny Jew that just falls apart at age 50 just because I work up my butt off. I want to be the guy. And there's a big sign on his wall that says, those who say it can't be done, better get the fuck out of the way of people who are doing it. And that's the truth. 
Yeah. You know, for those that say it can't be done, please get out of the way of people who are doing it. Well, you know, the, and, and that's the thing. I mean, what you're talking about is the mileage on the 40-year-old body. I'm, I'm working with a 50-year-old body. In, in my 20s, I developed myself both mm -hmm. academically and athletically. And the one thing that I, we talked about this morning at breakfast is for our kids, I never wanted any of my kids to be an athlete, but I wanted them to be athletic, mm -hmm. which simply meant adaptable, resourceful, team-oriented, and grit. That's yes. what athletic means to me. So I want to be athletic, but I don't have one particular sport that I could even potentially be good at now because my ADHD won't let me do it long enough. Right. But what I, what I learned in my 40s is that the missing part of my fitness and wellness life and journey was the rest and regen that I thought that was going to take care of itself. Mm -hmm. I sleep when I'm, I fall down and I eat when I'm hungry. And my wife has taught me, basically, I learned to eat better in my 40s and I didn't start learning to sleep better until my 50s, mm -hmm. but I'm healthier now than I was 10 years ago in almost every metric even though I've got more health issues now. Mm. And so there is so much that can still be done. And most of the best advice is you can't out-exercise a bad lifestyle or bad diet. That's true. And don't even try to fix your diet if you're not sleeping and hydrating and breathing right. So, so much of the things that have made me better in my 50s were things that I could have done for free in my 40s. I wouldn't have had to spend a dime to sleep an extra hour, drink a little more water, do some intermittent fasting, Amen. and well, really adjust my diet. Well, so, what you're talking about, Gray, is it reevaluate your priorities. You know, I started yeah. out by saying, personally, it's changing my goals. But by changing my goals, I have to readjust and think about what is a priority for me when it comes to my exercise or activities that I'm doing. Yeah. I do not play basketball anymore. I used to love playing recreational basketball. No, not yeah. happening. So changing what a priority is for me, definitely, and I think that's what you guys both are alluding to, your goals are going to change, mm -hmm. you get kids, you're 40, you're getting older, but what's, a, what's the number one or two things you have to do when you go into the gym? Always. For me- Well, I'm not saying oh, just, per, oh, I'm just saying, oh, sorry. just mentally, you have to think that oh, way. Oh, yeah. It's just, what, what are the things I've got to get done? Because we don't have as much time. No. We've got to be efficient. So there's certain things that in order for me to reach my goals, I've got to create better priorities. Yes. It may be sleep, it may be whatever. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We, um, the, uh, but go ahead and give us, go ahead and share the exercise. No, 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 no. But to. I want to hear them now, Brian. Hey, there, it's a mindset, right? You, 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 there is, you, you got to tap in to the, to why you're doing what it is you're doing. It's chest the, and buys, isn't the, it? Ew. It's chest and buys. <sighs> it's Come chest on. and buys day every day. What are you talking <laughs> every about? Day. I don't understand why. It's a pattern. <laughs> and it? I sleep better and eat fiber, but it's always chest, chest and buys. It's part of every pattern. <laughs> uh, the, the, when you stop and realize that, you know, every day is a new day. Okay. It's that every day is a new day. You reset the button. It's, it's your, it's up to you to make that day the best day, you know, better than the last. And when you, uh, when you take that into account, you know, for me, I have, you know, my, my wifey is a hospice nurse. And so day in and day out, all she's doing is seeing end of life. Right. And to be, you know, we've lived together now for, and Brianna's now 13, so 13 years. And during that time, I, I haven't become numb at all to death. In fact, I've become more sensitive to it. Mm -hmm. And in a way that reminds me that that is part of life. If you, by 40s, haven't started to prioritize yourself in the makeup, meaning in life, one of the things about the, I, I love books, Audiobooks, especially, uh, but that one of the ones uh, that, you know, the, the books I read early in the career was uh, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, right? Stephen Covey. Yeah. yeah, Stephen Covey. And, you know, he talks about sharpening the saw. He talks about, you know, just, you know, always building yourself and, and understanding. You, right you, now, one you do automatically is the win-win. You don't ever do anything for yourself that doesn't benefit somebody else and makes you a good coach. But yeah, that was one of the ones I got from Absolutely. as a win-win and seeking anything different than that means you're exploiting yourself or somebody else. He talked about in the beginning of life, you are dependent. You're learning dependence. Then the, that second stage of life, you, you, you're striving for independence, right? But then when you really mature, if you've learned those two principles well, then it becomes interdependence. If you have family, coworkers, anybody that depends on you, I would say, hopefully, you're doing the due diligence to be, you know, the best you can be. And show up you, better. And show up better. If you can't understand that you are a triune being, meaning you are, a, you are mind, body, and spirit, and if you can't handle all those three, you are not managing yourself well, you will not manage others well. 
that's a principle. That's just a principle. So what I'm asking for, for men, women over 40, love yourself more. Recover more. What Gray was talking about. Lee, change your goals and stick to your goals. If you want something to happen, it has to be on a calendar. It has to live at a time and place. If you have a busy life, wake up earlier and get off the damn Netflix already. You know Take what you care. said about Greg Rose? He willed himself into being a golf expert. When I wrote Athletic Body and Balance, it was the thing I had the hardest problem with in my life was balancing all these wonderful things and opportunities that we have. But there's nothing better than that. Mm -hmm. The best you can do each day is balance it. And that's what the yin yang symbol is about. You, you can't ever have more white than black or whatever, but balancing it is the harmony that keeps the wheel spinning. Absolutely. So. Don't overcomplicate it. Yep. Uh -huh. Don't overcomplicate it. And for those of you guys that have children out there, you owe it to your children it starts complicated. <laughs> so you're decomplicating it, from the time the sun comes up. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've done a couple commercials out there for Hypervolt. You know, I'm a pretty good looking guy, so I'm out, you know. and, and <laughs> There you are. Yeah. I mean, when you've, when you've got that, I don't know if you've got the camera up there. I mean, you are that. wearing the Grey Cook starter t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you know, it's been you, a three-day fashion you, makeover. Hey. He's an official redneck. It's not, it's not taught. It's caught. My children, I don't. I don't force her to work out. I don't, she doesn't need to go out and I'm going to go outside and play. I don't have to go tell she's that's, she watches me do it and she just follows along. Same thing with Cassie. And I, I didn't show him. He doesn't, he's picking up kettlebells and, and moving around sandbags and throwing them around because, Hey, he's doing it. Must be cool. You know, he, I have this one little video with the tequila you know, he's sitting there and singing and laughing his butt off because I'm laughing my butt off, but he doesn't know the song's funny or he's just laughing. Cause, and if you realize that about a child and what you're doing, then you owe it to your family to be the best version of yourself. And, and that's how you provide for a family, not monetarily. I'm going to just put money into the bank. I'm going to sit my butt down. You, you Come on. You're just going to, it's just going to be another person who's struggling with, 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 movement, strength. And in my house, I'm in charge of all dad venture yeah. and you got to be fit. If you're going to design adventures and have to probably save people that you put in harm's way in your adventures. So it's, you got to piece that together for mind, body, soul, everybody. Yep. So we talked a little bit about moderation and lifestyle and putting, putting priorities first. Mm -hmm. And, um, as a, a celebrity trainer and athletic performance coach. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you get a lot of, you know, people who want a certain aesthetic, you know, a, a physique, a, a body. And so when talking about moderation and people putting things first in their life, um, I would imagine some people aren't willing to give certain things up. And one of those things as a over 40 year old, an adult, a parent, mm -hmm. maybe especially. Mm -hmm. Alcohol may be one of those things mm -hmm. that they're not willing to give up. They understand moderation, but they just don't want to go, you know, cold turkey on it. So do you have any maybe like a suggestion on something they could do in moderation, maybe a better choice than something else? You know, a lot of the men might, they might want their IPAs and I'm mm -hmm. not giving that up. So if you can sit there and, you know, any advice that you Absolutely. give some of your athletes? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think you, you just have to be truly real with your clients. You really can't sugarcoat it. They're, the story behind anybody telling me that I am going to give this up, you know, I don't want to. And that, that always sounds absolute to me. And I've always kind of like doubted that. I'm like, well, let's talk about your goals and let's find out if you really don't, if you, it's the whole sense of creation and change happens for a much different reason other than physique better. Like, do you really want to get laid more, Charles? <laughs> or do you just need the IPA? Which one is it? Because if you do get pecs and arms, will your wife do you more? <laughs> <laughs> and when he says yes, I said, then put the goddamn IPA down and realize that there's nookie on the other side. <laughs> but if you cannot connect the dots for your clients, they will continue the need to numb in a way so that they can always say it wasn't working. You must believe in your clients more than you believe than they believe in themselves. And if someone's telling me I can't, then, and I believe that, then I have done them a disservice as their coach and just, all right, oh, you go ahead and do that. 
will they get to their goal? I want to get laid more, though. Yeah. You, no. All you do is figure Man, out. He took thing. it Where, primal. I was just going to do the math and say, okay, you can have a little bit of alcohol, but you can't have dessert anymore because it's a carb calculation. <laughs> he took it way more hey, primal. Hey, you're in the Bible belt. I'm in L.A. <laughs> I, I got to be got a lot of time. We talked about efficiency. Figure out what the candy is. What's the candy? What's going to motivate <laughs> you to do it? Hey, hey, same thing. You know, uh, there's a lot of mothers. Hey, I, you know, I, my, got my kids. I got this. If I don't get my glass of wine before, I will not sleep. I won't look. Maybe we got to find a different thing because this wine is, all it's doing is, is it, this is like the wine zone. So no matter how many, you just continue, you just straight there, connect that dot. What's, what's that about? That, I thought this is what you wanted to get rid of. Why do you need to get rid of this then? If this is really going to cause you that much stress, you don't, do you? And for some of the clients, you're right, I don't. What is that one about? If you want your wine, then stick to it. Let's do some other, let's accommodate that. Let's get some of that extra work in. And does it really have to be every night? Can you switch a couple nights out with an alcoholic kombucha? With, a, with a, a, a deep eddies and soda water? Something with a little less sugar? I mean, you show them the sugar equations. You show them the calories. It is calories in. It's calories out. I don't, wanna, I don't know the math. But I do know that, you know, a little less up here is a little less over there. They know that. And by the way, alcoholic kombucha, oh my goodness. You're getting your probiotics <laughs> and a buzz at Here the same time. Oh my there gosh. Is, there is there is there cannot the be any of that. The functional movement. Uh, there can't be any of that. Uh, alcoholic kombucha. We're going to brand our own I prefer own the grapefruit yep. flavor. Yeah. Great herb. God thing. bless that nectar. <laughs> there, should be a, uh, there should be a gut screen on the first. <laughs> You're, we, you put your thumbprint on there. Oh my God, you're a one. Drink it down. You and also, you are a three <laughs> on gut health. Yeah, <laughs> FMS kombucha with just 5% alcohol. <laughs> Paddleboarding not recommended after three. <laughs> and now it's time for our fireside chat with Gray Cook. Guys, there's a lot of recordings of me saying mobility comes before stability and stability comes before movement. And, and I think that might have unintentionally confused a lot of people at first. And if you just think back to the way we were born, we were born with huge amounts of mobility, very poor ability to control it, and almost no ability to move. You didn't even have head control when you were born. So our movement capabilities come to us, number one, by having the freedom to move, the, the flexibility and mobility to move. And then over time, as, a, as an infant, developing the control of that movement, first in, in small pieces and then in group together parts like locomotion and manipulation, moving you and moving other things. Now, Here's where we get into a little bit of a problem. When we start teaching our advanced workshops like uh, SFMA Level 2, FMS Level 2, where we're taking these case studies and going deep into exercise and movement correction, I think a lot of people feel like they've got to finish working on mobility and then start working on stability, and then once that reaches a level of appreciation, start working on movement. And that's not really my intention. My intention is to know where the problem is. And anytime we can fix the problem, we fix it with whole movement, not supplementation. Anytime we try to recalibrate your nutrition, I know we got to use supplements, but if we can fix you with whole foods, then that's a behavior change you can stick with. What if somebody quits making your supplement the way you like it? So we've always had to jumpstart mobility and a, a, a good clinician's hands can do a lot to speed that journey up. A, a trainer's wisdom about some of the best ways to combat mobility problems is going to be helpful too. So we got to know where your bottleneck is. Some of us don't have a mobility bottleneck. We're just, you know, put together and inherently flexible, but we always have a problem with being stable. Now, what I did with the uh, uh, groupings of exercise we call flows is we have a flow, which is really a three or four station mobility movement package. We did the same thing with motor control. And when you don't have mobility and motor control problems, we did one to challenge that 
polish of your functional movement. We call that one symmetry. Now, if you already know you're having mobility problems, you've probably already been on a stretching routine that didn't work and you gave up. And that's because it's better whenever possible to work a whole movement pattern and a couple of different spinal postures, upright, horizontal, with a focus on mobility. Not an isolation of mobility, but a focus of mobility. If you have a stability motor control or core problem, we still do a whole movement remedy with a focus more on stability. And if, if you're put together pretty good, mobility and stability, we then do something that challenges symmetry. So we've got these flows. And if you watch each of them, you will see moves in them that require both mobility and stability. But it's that dance that we're trying to get smoother. So unlike a computer or a car, we don't just work on mobility, stability, and movement in isolation. They're all there together, but our measurements, the stuff we do at FMS, allows us to know where the bottleneck is. So imagine this, typical athlete, tight hip flexors, tight ankles, tight quads. Okay, I could give you three stretches, or I could put you through a mobility flow, and you will see where at the same time I'm challenging the left ankle, I'm challenging the right hip flexor. Go ahead and watch it, and you'll see exactly what we're doing. But learning how to do these things in unison allows you to help them work together. And when you have mobility problems, part of your body's fighting another part of your body. When you have stability problems, part of your body's fighting another part of your body. So whenever possible, I will try to give you a movement package that exposes your weakness. You're going to be more wobbly when you got stability problems, and you're going to hit a wall when you got mobility problems. But then playing with your position, your breathing, and whatever your progression is, to work that in a whole movement actually is measurably better than isolation. Sometimes you get the same benefit, but it just lasts longer when you do it through a whole movement pattern. And that's why when we go back into martial arts and dance and gymnastics, you will see packages of movement that work really well together. You will see katas and, and moves that just complementary move and transition is all together. So, we isolate mobility, stability, and movement problems, but we always try to work on them with global movement first. And if there's not budging, we can definitely do some local stuff. What are some local things we do in physical therapy to help jumpstart mobility? Well, we'll do a lot of soft tissue, measure a difference, and then make you use it real quick. If we see a stability problem, we'll use a piece of strategically placed tape, maybe an orthotic in your shoe, or a little bit of a back brace just to show you what integrity feels like with the full intention of weaning you off of that at the point when you can resume the stability on your own. So because I put things in a hierarchy and order, you're never going to get your best stability if you got a mobility problem. And you're never going to get your best movement patterns if you got a stability problem. You'll see what I'm trying to say. But the way we fix it doesn't look like a stretching routine or a isometric stability routine. It looks like movement. And if you got a mobility problem, that's going to be your bottleneck. It looks like movement, but you got a stability problem, that's going to be your bottleneck. But we like to change as much as we can with whole movement fixes, but then go back and measure specifically the mobility and stability changes that occurred. The motor control screens do that for us in stability, and a lot of our general movement screening and goniometry do that for us in mobility. So even though we isolate the problem and we know it's your bottleneck, you're doing a whole program, and we're actually letting the mobility and stability dance work itself out. The weakest link will always show through, but the whole movement solution is sometimes the most specific change that's also sustainable. That'll do it for this episode of The Movement Podcast. Thanks for listening. And if you liked what you heard, please take a minute to subscribe and review. If you want to learn more about our system and take the next step in your movement journey, visit us at movementpod.com. Until next time, be sure to first move well, then move often.